How's it going everybody? It's Will Zulu here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a beautiful, delicious, quick and easy apple pie that will be great for any occasion. Alright guys, so for today's dessert, I'm going to be using some of my quick publicity scraps. If you haven't already, go check out my video on how to make this amazing quick pot pastry alternative. The great thing about this quick pot pastry is that it only takes three hours, which is obviously a great thing. But most importantly, the taste and the flakiness is not sacrificed at all, which is absolutely incredible, considering it takes a third of the time to make. But anyways, to kickstart this recipe, you want to start by flouring your bench and the dough to avoid from sticking, and you want to roll it out to around four millimeters in thickness. Then place it onto a tray that's been lined with some non-stick parchment, and prick all over the fork. Go crazy. And then you're gonna put this in the fridge for around 20 minutes or so to give it time to rest. While the pastry is in the fridge resting, we're gonna make a really quick green apple sauce. We're gonna keep up the good habits from our ultimate apple turnover episode. It's very simple. We're gonna start by peeling and coring about three to four Granny Smith apples. It all depends on the size, really. If you've got small Granny Smiths, use four. And then you're gonna cut them in half, place them in a microwave safe bowl, along with one cinnamon stick that I'm gonna lightly torch with a broad torch. By torching the cinnamon stick, it really brings the best out of it. I really don't know why, it just does. It just brings it back to life. The smell it gives off is out of this world. You should definitely give it a go in your next recipe. And then you're going to tightly cover the bowls, cling them, and microwave on full power for about 5, possibly up to 10 minutes, as all microwaves are different. You just want to cook it until the apples are nice and soft. Oh my god, wow. Guys, I wish you were here right now because this just smells incredible. And now listen carefully, this step is very important. When the apples first come out of the microwave, they are going to be red hot. So don't remove the cling film, as the steam will burn you like nothing else. It's a very nasty burn. So let it cool down fully at room temperature. And then, once the apples are fully cooled down, remove the cling film and the cinnamon stick as it's done its job, and we're going to finish them off on the stove. So tip the apples out into your frying pan and place it over medium heat. And cook it until the apples have broke down. Then add some sugar to taste. For the amount of apples I used today, I added about 10 grams of sugar, but there's no rules, that's the beauty of cooking. If your apples are a bit sharper than mine, add a bit more sugar. If they're a bit sweeter than mine, add a bit less sugar. Comes down to preference. Add it to your taste. And I also added one teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. But guys, that is totally optional. And you're going to continue cooking the apple sauce over medium heat to cook off all the excess moisture. And that's it. How simple was that? And this is one hell of a delicious apple sauce, indeed. And you just want to simply tip the apple sauce out onto a frozen tray that I've lined with some cling film to make it easier to wrap. And a frozen tray just to speed up the whole cooling process. And then cover the apples up with the cling film so that it doesn't oxidize. And allow it to cool down fully and then store in the fridge until you need it. So next you want to get your pastry out of the fridge and cut out a 20 centimeter disc. And remove all the scraps and please don't forget, keep the scraps as this can probably make another one of these pies if you're lucky. And then put the pastry into the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes to fill. Or you can also put it in the freezer for 5 to 10 minutes to speed up the process. Your take. Meanwhile, we're going to make a vanilla and cinnamon flavoured butter. It is so simple. Into a saucepan, combine together 35 grams of unsalted butter, 2 grams of ground cinnamon or 1 cinnamon stick, and 5 grams of vanilla bean paste or vanilla extract. I prefer vanilla bean paste because it gets the specks of vanilla throughout. And heat up over medium heat until the butter is melted, then set to one side and keep warm. And to follow you, you're going to remove the pastry from the fridge or freezer, whichever route you chose, and spread over your green apple sauce and put it back into the fridge to keep nice and chill while we saw all the topping. And for the topping, you're going to need about four to five bacon apples, and you can pick any you want. For instance, honey crisp, pink lady, going delicious, apal, you name it. That's your take. I'm using some pink ladies today. And you want to peel and call those fellas. So when it comes down to cutting the apples, you want to cut the apples pretty thin until like one millimeter. To do with that on a knife, it can be a bit tricky because you want every slice the same thickness. And the best way to do that, instead of using a knife, is to use a Japanese mandolin. That's the best way forward. But if it's your first time using a mandolin, I recommend using a guard as they are very dangerous. If that scares you a bit, just use a razor sharp knife. And then once you've got enough apples sliced, you're going to start overlapping the apples around the outside of the pie nice and tightly, so nice and tucked in. And then you want to place some sliced apples or broken slices or scraps in the centre of the pie just to fill up the gap. And now you're going to push the whole pie with this fantastic vanilla and cinnamon butter. And then you're going to repeat it with the second layer of apples and bake at 180 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes 
Then remove from the oven, turn the oven up to 260 Celsius, just all over the sugar, and put it back in for an extra 10 minutes or so until slightly caramelized. And then immediately slide on your warrack to reduce the chances of the pastry underneath from going soggy. And this dessert is best served either at room temperature or warm with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. And that's it. It's so simple to do. It tastes great. I hope you give it a go. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. And hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you in the next one.